Lower limb peripheral arterial disease is a cardiovascular condition where arteries become occluded by atherosclerosis. Keep on listening if you want to know the exercise guidelines. Hi and welcome back to Physiotutors. About 13% of adults over 50 years old suffer from peripheral arterial disease or PAD. Major risk factors include diabetes, smoking and dyslipidemia. Symptoms include a cramp-like feeling distal to the occlusion. Complaints usually occur in the calf, but thighs and buttocks can be affected as well, although less frequently. The pain abolishes with rest when blood supply is no longer inadequate. Peripheral arterial disease is usually a stable condition in terms of symptoms, but the narrowing is progressive. Patients have a comparable fitness to those suffering from heart failure. Their walking capacity might be half of that of age match controls. There exists a strong correlation between this condition and psychological metrics such as depression, poor quality of life, and avoidance of physical activity. Naturally, this avoidance behavior will worsen the condition itself. This sounds like a pretty serious condition. How can we treat it? Let's start off with secondary prevention. Things should not get worse. Strategies include cessation of smoking, diet changes, lipid modifications, statins, antiplatelet therapy, and good management of diabetes and high blood pressure. A decent cardiac screening might be at its place here because of the shared pathophysiology. The primary issue is reduced walking ability. A walking program is thus recommended. Different consensus guidelines endorse the use of supervised exercise programs. However, as most things in physiotherapy, the optimal variables are unknown. The most commonly reported protocol is by Gartner and Skinner. Baseline metrics to gather before starting are pain-free and maximum walking distance and or six minutes walking distance. The Gartner and Skinner protocol involves a constant speed of 3.2 km per hour on a flat treadmill surface. Every two minutes, the hill percentage jumps by 2%. The advantage of a treadmill is the standardization of the sessions. So what are the benefits of such programs? To start, a Cochrane review noted that there is high quality evidence that the programs increase pain-free and maximum walking distance compared to controls. Pain-free distance of about 80 meters and maximum distance of about 120 meters as shown by a meta-analysis. Aside from these improvements, there is moderate quality evidence that physical and mental aspects in quality of life are positively affected. Viable alternatives include cycling or arm cranking to improve maximum walking distance. This suggests some systemic effects. Resistance training can be complemented, although guidelines are clear that this is no substitute for aerobic conditioning. To be clear, unstructured and unsupervised approaches that suggest more walking to the patient are not effective. Supervision of the patient is required to get the best results. The exercise program should be carried out for at least three months and for more than three times per week. Based on current data, patients should be instructed to walk to near maximum leg pain, which is pretty tough. The patient should be experiencing claudication pain after three to five minutes of walking. If he or she is not experiencing any symptoms, the inclination or speed should be altered. When moderate to strong symptoms occur, the patient is instructed to rest until symptoms abolish. Rinse and repeat for at least 10 to 15 minutes and ideally more than 30. If the patient is able to walk for more than 10 minutes before moderate symptoms occur, the starting speed or grade should be altered. Patients should be encouraged to up their session duration to about an hour. Other modalities can be explored as well. The authors stress that the clinical lead of such exercise programs should have decent knowledge such as a vascular surgeon, a nurse specialist or exercise professional with sufficient schooling. Many clinicians feel that exercising is dangerous with this certain condition. About 70% of vascular surgeons believe so in the aortoiliac stenosis patients. However, a review by Gommens et al. noted an all-cause complication rate of one event for every 10,340 hours of exercising. So we can safely assume that these worries are unsubstantiated. There are contraindications though, like uncontrolled hypertension, unstable angina, 
or arrhythmias. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I am Max for Physio Tutors, and I will see you in another video. Bye.